Hello! This is part two of the video tutorial series on dialog UIs in the dialog system. In this video, we'll make a dialog UI from scratch. If you haven't already watched part one, I strongly recommend watching that video first. Start with a dialog manager game object and add an empty game object to its canvas. We'll name it My Dialog UI. Set its bounds to cover the screen. Then add a standard dialog UI component to it. Create a panel UI element for the alert panel. We'll set it to the top of the screen. Let's change the color too while we're at it. Then add a Text Mesh Pro UI element for the alert text. You could alternatively use UI Text or Super Text Mesh if you have that in your project. To make the alert panel automatically resize to fit alert text, we'll add a horizontal layout group and a content size fitter. This is just regular Unity UI layout stuff. You're not obligated to use these components. If you want to learn more about them, I recommend Unity's tutorials on Unity UI. Here we can see that the alert panel resizes to fit the text. Now we finally do something to the alert panel that's specific to the dialog system. Add a UI panel component. The dialog system uses this component to open and close panels. In addition to letting you set up animations to show and hide the panel, it also has Unity events that you can hook into for your own purposes. Now return to the main standard dialog UI component and assign the alert panel elements. Next, we'll set up the conversation elements. Add a panel for the main dialog panel. I'm going to set this panel to the bottom portion of the screen. Also add a UI panel here. I just want to remark that the only elements that are absolutely required are the alert text, subtitle text, and response buttons. A dialog panel game object isn't actually required. In practice, most of these elements are used in almost all dialog UIs, but technically they're not required. Now add a panel for the subtitle panel. We'll name it Subtitle Panel. We don't need a background image for this panel, so disable the image component. Next, we'll need to add some text elements for the portrait name and the subtitle text. Let's put the portrait name at the top, and we'll put the subtitle text below it. Now 
Add an image game object for the portrait image. And let's put this on the right hand side of the panel. I'll assign a placeholder image so we get a feel for what it looks like. And now we add the subtitle text. I may play around with the look and positioning of this. Now we'll add a Continue button. This button will only be shown if your Dialog Manager is configured for a Continue button mode. You can configure its on click to call the subtitle panels on continue method, or as we're doing here, you can add a standard UI continue button fast forward component. This component ties the continue button to the subtitle text's typewriter effect, which means we'll need to add a typewriter effect. Back on the subtitle text, add a Text Mesh Pro typewriter effect since we're using Text Mesh Pro. Then assign this to the Fast Forward Components Typewriter Effect field. You can leave the Dialog UI field unassigned, in which case it'll find the Dialog UI in its parents. Then configure the OnClick method to call the Fast Forward Components on Fast Forward. Add a Standard UI Subtitle Panel component to the Subtitle Panel. This will hold references to all of the subtitle panel's UI elements. Then go ahead and assign those UI elements. You can also set the visibility rules and other settings on this component. We'll set visibility to always from start. Now we'll create the menu panel. Create another panel game object. Let's make this overlap the subtitle text. Since the previous video used instantiated buttons, this time let's use design time placed buttons. Response buttons must have a standard UI response button component, so add that to the button. Then assign the button and text components. You can choose to always set the text label to a specific color, or untick this checkbox to use the color that you set at design time. Now we'll make some copies of this button and position them all.
Response buttons will automatically set up their on-click events as long as no event handlers are already assigned to on-click. If you assign something to on-click, make sure to also call the standard UI response buttons on-click method. Now add a standard UI menu panel and assign the UI elements. In this basic menu, we won't set up elements for the PC name and image or a slider for the timer. Also, unlike the previous video, which used a button template and a container for the instantiated copies of the template, we'll assign an explicit list of buttons to the buttons list. You can set up the menu to use buttons from the first button in the list onward or from the last button going backward. Now that the menu panel is set up, we can assign it to the standard dialog UI component. And let's test this out by setting up a dialog system trigger. Looks like I forgot to do two things. The first is assigning our custom dialog UI to the dialog manager's dialog UI field. And the second is assigning the menu panel to the standard dialog UI's menu panels list. I'd like to make one other change while I'm at it. This subtitle text is a little big for my taste. We'll give it one last look over, and I see that the main panel needs to be assigned. And let's give this a try. That's looking pretty good, so we'll cover one last thing, which is animating panels. We can just do this through Unity's animation window. Select the menu panel and open the animation window. We'll create two animations, a show animation and a hidden animation. For hide, we'll just reverse the show animation. We'll animate the Y scale to make the menu grow and shrink vertically. For the hidden animation, we'll just set the Y scale to zero. Disable looping on both animations. Now we'll set up the animator controller. The animator will start in the hidden state and based on two trigger parameters, show and hide, it'll transition to the show and hide states. Our hide state will just be show in reverse. If you want to use different names for your trigger parameters, you can set them on the standard UI menu panel here. If you plan to pause time during conversations, 
set the animator's update mode to unscaled. Now let's see how that animation looks. And that's a dialog UI made completely from scratch. We haven't yet covered some advanced features such as animated portraits, but you can find the details on those features in the online manual. If you have questions, please feel free to post on the Pixel Crushers forum, use the contact form, or post in the Pixel Crushers Discord server. Thanks for watching.